over the past, I don't know, five, six years, I've noticed a trend. And I've never really took notice of the trend until recently when I wanted to watch, I think it was Aquaman 2. Now, I usually wait for films to come out on rent um, when they get to the renting stage. Not the premier renting stage when they're at basically nineteen ninety nine to to rent a video for 20, 24 hours, uh, which came in during COVID, and they seem to have kept it going. Um, when a film used to come out for rent, it was a rentable price. And then I've noticed a trend between Marvel and DC. When DC remove, release a movie on streaming, I'm not going to go into the having digital and physical copies. Um, I always usually buy the physical anyway. But when I want to rent a movie, you know, you, you usually buy it uh, digitally. Uh, when Marvel release a movie, it usually starts at an immediate... They don't usually do the premiere kind of rental thing. It usually goes straight from cinema to DVD release. And you can usually buy it for eleven ninety nine. That's British pounds, eleven ninety nine. They're always eleven ninety nine Marvel movies. And then when they go to rent, i.e. the proper rental, it's three pound forty nine. Always. No matter how big the movie is, no matter how much money it made at the pictures, movie at uh, the cinema, always three pound forty nine. DC, on the other hand, their movies come in premiere rental nineteen ninety nine. Now I'm never going to pay nineteen nineteen. That's just not going to happen. But then, when the movie comes to sale, it's fifteen ninety nine for a DC movie. Not eleven forty nine like a Marvel movie. It's fifteen ninety nine, and then when it comes to actual rental, i.e., your, your normal average rental, DC movies always cost five pound forty nine, and this is on all sites. At, um, now and again on Prime, they might sell it for four ninety nine, but a Marvel movie it will still be only. Do you know what I mean? Um, DC always seem to charge an extra two pound on top of the movies. Now this is the action movie, action live action movies. Um, DC usually sell the cartoon animation movies for nine ninety nine, um, but when they go to rental, it is still five pound forty nine. That's six six quid, six pound. But yet Marvel sell them at £3.49. And that is a big discrepancy between why, what is what is that reason for? Why are DCs, now I know they don't make as much money as Marvel at, at, at the box office and such forth. So what are they doing? Screwing over the customers and charging more so they can try and make a little bit more money back. Because it's been going on for a long, long time, and I think it's uh, nobody taught, nobody says anything about it. Nobody seems to batter an eyelid at it that they can take an extra two pound off people, sometimes three, and nobody batters an eyelid at it. It's very odd. Why two companies who produce basically the same kind of movies uh, can charge such Dithering price differences. Um, so, I was just wondering if anybody else had noticed and took this to heart and had an issue with it because I do. I think it's nonsense and I think DC needs to sort their head out. Um, that's one thing you can say about Marvel at least they're not ripping people off when they sell them rental movies because I know the rental thing isn't a big thing anymore and a lot of people are just subscribed to Disney Plus or. HBO Max or whatever they do. 
But a lot of people like me who don't have a big budget like to subscribe to every streaming service there is, I, if I want to watch them, I usually will just cutter up the money and I will either rent some or I'll wait for it to go on Blu-ray and I'll buy it. Um, I just don't know. I don't know why they do it. So good on Marvel for charging such low prices for the rentals. But why are DC charging so much? You tell me. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments. Tell me what you think it is. Tell me why you think it is. And uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.